so we are going to be reviewing the skeletal system. Um, the first thing I want to talk about with the skeletal system is how many bones there are. There are 206 bones in the adult skeleton. And remember, it's important to um, discuss that it is the adult skeleton because the fetal skeleton has more bones because certain pieces, like the spine, are not fused together. There are two divisions of the skeletal system, the axial and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton consists of the skull, the vertebrae, and the rib cage. And the appendicular skeleton, as we discussed, consists of the limbs, so the arms, the legs, the pelvic girdle, which includes the pelvis, and the shoulder girdle, which includes the clavicle and the scapula. Next, there are five major functions that are involved with the skeletal system. First two, support and movement. So we have our bones that provide a frame for our body. We also have bones that provide attachment points for our muscles so we can move that frame. Third is storage. Bones are a storage reservoir for minerals, the calcium. Um, we also have fat that is stored in our bones and immature red blood cells are stored in our bones because that is where the process of hematopoiesis takes place, which is blood cell formation, formation, excuse me. And it's not just red blood cells that are produced there, it's red blood cells, all the varieties of white blood cells and platelets. And finally, the fifth major function of the skeletal system is protection. Why do we have those bones? They're there to protect our underlying organs. Next I'm going to talk about our two different bone types. And the first one is compact bone. Compact bone is arranged into a structural unit called an osteon. And we have studied the uh, structure of an osteon and I will go through that on the next slide. The other type of bone is spongy bone. And spongy bone is arranged into um, a conformation called trabeculae. Both compact and spongy bone provide support and strength to the bones. But they're located in different places. So if we're looking at a long bone, compact bone is majorly, uh, majorly found in the shaft or the diaphysis versus spongy bone is found in the epiphysis or the ends. And again, we were looking at the structure of the compact bone or the osteon more in-depthly. So here we have a cross-section of a long bone and as you can see on the outside here we have all of these little circles and those are all osteons. We're going to be looking at one of these osteons right here pulled out and an osteon is the structural unit of compact bone, okay? Spongy bone is this stuff that you see in here, which is arranged in a more porous looking trabeculae. All right, so here we go, the trabeculae of spongy bone. So let's look at the osteon and its different structures. So first off, we have the osteon that we pulled out here. All right, and the osteon had diff has different portions to it. So the center of the osteon, which is located right here, it's a central canal that has blood vessels and probably nerves, and that is called the reversion or central canal. On the outside of the reversion canal, we have these rings that are located like this that look like tree rings. Okay, we, we talked about how if we were going to, you know, cut open a tree, we would see the different different rings. So these rings are called lamellae. I talked about how they're the rings or the streets. And then on these streets, we have little houses, which are little spaces that are called lacunae. And inside of these little spaces or houses, we have mature bone cells, which are called osteocytes. Those are the little black spider-looking things right here. 
And the little osteocytes that are in their little houses that are called lacunae that live on their streets called lamellae, they're not isolated. They can communicate with each other by these little processes or extensions that are called canaliculi. And then if you consider the osteon its own little town, well, this bone has tons of little towns in it because these are all different osteons, okay? Each of these osteons communicate with each other by way of this type of canal called a Volksmann or perforating canal. So the next thing I'm going to talk about are the four different shapes of bones. And the first one we talked about was a long bone. A long bone is longer than it is wide. And uh, an example that we've used time and time again is the femur. Another type is a short bone. An example of the short bones are the carpals of our hands and the tarsals of our feet. They're about as wide as they are long. Next, we have flat bones, which are our examples could be the ribs or the sternum. And finally, we have irregular shaped bones, which could be the pelvis or our vertebrae. These are all just four different types of classifications of bone shapes. I'm going to be asking that you label the bones of the axial and the appendicular skeleton as well as the facial bones and the subanatomy of a vertebrae. This right here is the exact diagram that will be on your exam. This right here is an actual skeleton from a cadaver. So we'll go through these quickly. So starting here with number one, all right, which is like this over here. We have the skull, or you could say the frontal bone. Right here is the mandible, which is right here. There is the clavicle here, sternum here, humerus. You can just say ribs or rib cage. You can say vertebral column here, okay? Vertebrae that you see right here. Um, this right here, you can say pelvis. Right here they say the os coxi. Over here we have the lateral arm bone, or forearm bone, excuse me, which is the radius. Then we have the ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges down here. The femur is right here. The patella is right here. Medial leg bone is the tibia. Lateral is the fibula, la, fibula. tarsals metatarsals, phalanges. If you look over here, you should get a pretty good idea of where these things are. Okay, Back here they're seeing the calcaneus, which is one of the tarsal bones. The next thing we're going to do is go through the anatomy of a vertebrae. Um, I did send this to you in an email, and I will go through the labeling with you. So we have A, which is over here, is the pedicle. B is the transverse process. C, lamina. D, spinous process. E is the vertebral body. And F is the vertebral foramen. This is the exact same picture. This is directly from your test. So again, starting over. We have the pedicle, which is this section right here. I told you about how in interventional radiology they have to take um, a spike to go through that to get to the vertebral body here. Transverse process are these spiny things that stick out to the side. The lamina is this section right here. Spinous process is what you can feel like on the back of somebody's spine. So this would be pointing, you know, towards the uh, posterior section of a person's body. The body, the vertebral body, is this section right here, and the vertebral foramen is the whole. Next I'm going to be labeling the bones of the skull. You have seen this picture multiple times. I'm just going to go through and label them all, and then we will go through them. Again, this is 
exactly copy and paste it from your tests that you will have on chapter 5. So up here, we'll start with number one. We have the parietal bone, that's a paired bone. This yellow one in the front is the frontal. We have the nasal, which is in purple over here. The sphenoid, which is the pink that goes through your head. Um, number four here, or number five, excuse me, is the temporal, which is the orange on both sides of your head. Number six is another orange, which is the ethmoid. Number seven is the lacrimal. Number eight, zygomatic, 9, maxilla, 10, mandible, 11 is the middle nasal concha over here, 12 is the inferior nasal concha, and then 13 here is the vomer. What else should you know for the chapter 5 test? It's a good question. First thing, bone formation. What does bone start as? Cartilage. And the process of bone formation is ossification. Also, bone repair or remodeling. Knowing the different steps that when first bone is broken, it um, starts as there's a hematoma. So there's a fracture, then a hematoma forms, then cartilage is lays down then a bony collar is formed, and then a slow process of ossification occurs. So understanding and maybe being able to put those steps in order. What else? Differences in the adult and fetal skeleton. So understanding um, numbers of things, where red marrow is found, things like fontanelles. So there, um, that was in your notes and it's also in your chapter. Also, Understanding acute versus chronic arthritis and being able to explain them and provide examples of each. You should know the osteo glass, which are the bone builders, osteoclasts, which are the bone crushers, and osteocytes, that are the mature bone cells. You should know that calcitonin, which is a hormone that stimulates osteoblasts. You should know parathyroid hormone which is a hormone that stimulates osteoclasts to break down bone. And the osteocytes are what live in the lacunae. You also should be able to label or understand the different parts of a long bone, understanding that this is the epiphysis, the ends, and then we have the shaft, which is the diaphysis. And you should know that there is articular cartilage located at the ends on the epiphysis, that there is a membrane called the periosteum, periosteum on the shaft portion, and here we have articular R, here we go, articular cartilage. You should know that we have the either epiphyseal plates or epiphyseal lines in the diaphysis. You should know that there's a medullary cavity, all right, which in young people has red marrow and in adults has yellow marrow. You should know that spongy bone is down here and that compact bone is through here. You should be able to label this in your sleep. 